Hi guys, I am Usman Rudin. Welcome to another section of Learning with Preplus. So today we are going to look into Yugo Sugo Mathematics Pass question. In our previous videos, we've solved questions from Yugo Sugo Mathematics Pass question. Now today we are going to continue solving more questions. In this video, we are going to solve questions 11 to 15. So I hope you've been enjoying our videos. Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to get access to all our videos. Also, please kindly put on the notification bell to get notified whenever we put up a video on our channel. So let's solve questions for today. If a motorist travels 100 km in two and a half hours, what is the average speed in kilometer per hour? We have the options A, 45 km per hour, B, 36 km per hour, C, 50 km per hour, D, 40 km per hour, then E, 140 km per hour. So from the question, we have to find the average speed given the distance traveled, which is 100 km, and the time spent, which is two and a half hours. Now we have the information, so we have to bring them out in order to solve for the question. From the question, a motorist travels 100 km. That is the distance. Traveling 100 km means you've covered the distance of 100 km. So the distance is 100 km. So just imagine you walking from your house to the nearest shop in your area. So the distance you covered is measured in kilometers. So we have the distance covered is kilometer. Now walking a particular distance, you must have spent a particular time. So in this question, the time spent is two and a half hours. Now we have to calculate average speed. Now there's a formula for average speed and the formula is given as average speed equals distance traveled divided by time. So in this question, we already have the distance traveled and we have the time spent. So using this information, we can calculate the average speed. So average speed equals the distance 100 km divided by the time two and a half hours because you have to find the average speed in kilometer per hour. So from here, we have average speed equals to 100 km divided by two and a half hours. Now, this fraction can be expressed as 100 km divided by five over two hours. That is, we convert the mixed fraction 2O number one over two into five over two. That is the denominator two multiply the whole number two, which is giving us four. Then four plus one, that is five. So we have five over two hours. Now we convert division to multiplication. And when division changes to multiplication, the fraction after the division sign will interchange. That is, the denominator becomes the numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator. So at this point, we can divide. So 5 in 5, that is 1. 5 in 100, that is 20. So we have 20 multiplied by 2. And that is giving us 40. So we have kilometer and we have hours. So it's giving us kilometer per hour. So that is the average speed. Now, from the options, the correct option is option D, 40 km per hour. So that is how simple it is to answer such question. Remember, for that question to be solved, we used a formula, which is average speed equals distance traveled divided by time. Try and have the formula stored in your head because you can come across such question again. And when you have such question, just remember, average speed equals distance over time. Okay, let's move to the next question. Question 12. By how much is 25% of 25 Naira greater than 15% of 15 Naira? We have the options. A, 2 Naira 25 Kobo. B, 2 Naira 20 Kobo. C, 4 Naira. D, 4 Kobo. E, 25 Kobo. To answer this question, we need to find by how much is 25% of 25 Naira 
greater than 15% of 15 Naira. First of all, we need to know what is 25% of 25 Naira. And also, we find 15% of 15 Naira. Then, we cannot find the difference, which is going to be the bigger value minus the smaller value. Now, 25% of 25 Naira is the same thing as saying 25 divided by 100, that is 25%, which is 25 over 100, times 25 Naira. Now, 25 over 100, 25 in 25, that is 1. 25 in 100, that's giving us 4. Multiply by 25 Naira. Now, at this point, we have 25 Naira divided by 4, which is giving us 25 over 4 Naira. Now, we leave our answer in that form. Now, we come for 15% of 15 Naira. Now, checking 15% of 15 Naira, we have 15% to be equals to 15 over 100. Multiply by 15 Naira, because of means times. Now, 15, we can divide. 5 in 15, that is 3. So, 5 in 100, that is giving us 20. We can still divide. 5 in 20, that is 4. 5 in 15, that is 3. And that is giving us 3 multiplied by 3 Naira. That is 9 Naira divided by 4. So, at this point, we've been able to find 25% of 25 Naira. And also, we've been able to find 15% of 15 Naira. So, now we need to find by how much is 25% of 25 Naira greater than 15% of 15 Naira. So, we need to find the difference. So, difference is going to be the 25% of 25 Naira, which is 25 over 4 Naira, minus 15% of 15 Naira, which is 9 over 4 Naira. So, we have fraction minus fraction. What do we do here when we are subtracting fraction? First, we find the LCM of the denominators. Now, the denominators here is 4. It means the denominator is the same. So, what do we do? It means the LCM is the same number. So, that means the LCM here is 4. Now, how many 4 can we see in 4? That is 1. 1 multiplied by 25. We still have 25. Minus. How many 4 can we see in 4? That is still 1. 1 multiplied by 9. That is 9. So, now we have 25 Naira minus 9 Naira. And that is giving us 16 Naira. Now, we have divided by 4. So, divided by 4. Once we divide 16 by 4, we are going to get 4. And that is giving us our answer to be 4 Naira. So, therefore, the difference between 25% of 25 Naira and 15% of 15 Naira is 4 Naira. And the correct option is option C, 4 Naira. I hope that was easy for you to understand because the question is very straightforward. The question is, by how much is 25% of 25 Naira greater than 50% of 15 Naira? So the word there, greater than, it means you are simply to find the difference. Now to find the difference, you must also know what 25% of 25 Naira will be and 15% of 15 Naira will be. So from there you can calculate and get your difference. Question number 13. Subtract 0 0.07 from 1.1. Subtract 0 0.07 from 1.1. A, 6.93. B, 1.3. C, 1.03. D, 0.13. E, 1.3. This is just a simple subtraction. Let's perform it. To subtract 0.07 from 1.1, it simply means we have to say 1.1 minus 0.07. So now we write it out in this form. 1.1 minus 0.07. We write it as such as the point are under each other. So 1.1, 0.07. Now 0.07 is having two digits after the decimal point. So to make it balance, we add a digit after one to make it two digits after the decimal point. Now we have 1.10 minus 0.07. Now we need to subtract. 0 minus 7. That's impossible. So what do we do? We borrow 1 from the digit after 0, and the digit here is 1. If you borrow 1 from 1, this one here will change to 0. Now, the 1 we borrow will join 0 to give us 10. Now, we have 10 minus 7. That's giving us 3. Now, we have 0 minus 0, giving us 0. Now, we drop down the points. 
1 minus 0, that is 1. So it means that 1.1 minus 0 0.07 is equal to 1.03. Very easy and straightforward. The correct option is option C, 1.03. Okay, so that is obviously very easy, right? Yes, it's very easy. So performing subtraction in the same way we perform it with ordinary numbers. So using these decimal numbers, just make sure the decimal points are under each other. Then we can balance the numbers by adding zeros. So move to the next question. Okay, we have a graph here. Study this graph carefully and answer the questions below. Now we have this graph. This is temperature and this is days of a week. We have Sunday having a temperature of 10, Monday having a temperature of 30, Tuesday having a temperature of 20, Wednesday having a temperature of 40, Thursday having a temperature of 60, and Friday having a temperature of, okay, this is 20 or, okay, let's take it as 20. Now, the first question, question number 14, what was the average temperature from Wednesday to Thursday? So average, you remember average means we add up, then we divide by the number of values. Now we have the options A, 40, B, 60, C, 37.5, D, 45, E, 50. Now to answer this question, we have to refer back to the table. We need to know what is the temperature from Wednesday and what is the temperature for Thursday. Now looking at this graph, the temperature for Wednesday is 40. And that of Thursday is 60. So with these two temperatures, we can answer the question. So now, temperature for Wednesday is 40. Temperature for Thursday is 60. So average temperature is going to be the sum of the two values. 40 plus 60 divided by number of values, which is 2. Now, 40 plus 60, that's giving us 100. 100 divided by 2 is 50. Very straightforward. The values are from the graph. Then from the graph, we do our simple arithmetic. We add the two temperatures, then divide by 2. Now we have 50 to be the average temperature. And the correct option is option E, 50. Now we move to the last question for today's video. What was the total temperature for the first three days? A, 90, B, 60, C, 70, D, 50, E, 10. Looking at the temperature, for the first three days, we have Sunday, 10, Monday, 30, Tuesday, 20. So we need to add now from the graph. Temperature for Sunday is 10. Temperature for Monday, that is 30. Temperature for Tuesday, that is 20. So the total temperature for the first three days, we have total temperature equals 10 plus 30 plus 20. And when we add this together, we are going to get 60. So this means the total temperature for the first three days is 60. And the correct option is option B. So that brings us to the end of today's learning. I hope you are able to understand the concept we used in answering these questions. So if you have any question, please put it down in the comment section. Also, don't forget to like this video and remember to subscribe to our channel. So we will see in the next video. Bye.